I was worried the lack of mountain stage in Provence this year might dull some of the GC action, but boy was I wrong. Super exciting stage today in terrible wet conditions. Mads Pedersen in the leader's jersey, as you know, after winning the previous two stages, the prologue and then the sprint in town yesterday. But this stage was a lot hillier than the day before. There's loads of like 2k, 5%, 6% climbs, then a 6 kilometer 5% climb, about 30k's from the finish. And unfortunately for Little Trek, a strong rider, only 18 seconds behind on GC, got into the breakaway. Frigo, the Italian on Israel Premier Tech, you'll remember him in breakaways in the Giro last year being quite strong. He's, yeah, and that was a problem for them and the Catalan Azure Desert who were pulling for their new recruit Bruno Armirail, who I think is fourth on GC, and De Klerk having to pull. The problem for Trek was they're not, they didn't bring too many sort of versatile guys like Tom Schoenge. Bernard's really their only uh, climbing domestique, so they brought the gap down to 55 seconds with 49 Ks to go on one of these climbs, looking all fine. Uh, under control but then as the climb starts that gap really starts to go out again as Frigo pushes on here and then Moran and Saver decide to have some sort of well Moran doesn't pull through Saver doesn't like that and um, basically they let Frigo ride away and never see him again I mean he would have dropped him at some point anyway but maybe would have changed the race a bit if if he had their help in this valley before the next climb which starts here and you can see it's De Klerk on the front They've got Kirsch there, he's a versatile guy, he climbs reasonably well, but they don't have someone to really hold that gap stable or push on the climb. And so the gap goes now to 130 on these rollers with Frigo solo, and it's even, I think, peaked at 140, 142, 150 even before Arkea Samzik. This wasn't an attack. This was them trying to pace for Champoussin or Garcia Piana, who are reasonably close on GC, particularly Garcia Piana, who took the uh, intermediate bonifications yesterday. And they set up a little team time trial on the climb. You see Bernard's really the last guy pulling on the climb for Trek. And Pedersen's in that blue jersey, remember. And this group's getting thin. This is the 6K, 5% climb. And what I thought was going to end up being a reduced bunch sprint day became much more exciting with Rosh House going, with Costu in the wheel, and it split all apart on this climb with Pedersen here having to close this gap himself already with 30 k's to go. So maybe a combination of the bad weather, the, the, this being the only opportunity for real GC action, uh, and the French teams in particular really tried to make the most of it. So I really liked the way Arkea raced today. It was really aggressive. They tried their best to put Pedersen under pressure as much as possible, and, and right here they were. This is not an ideal situation for Pedersen, being completely isolated, getting rolled with 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two by Arkea, with 28, 30 k's to go. And after this, it was flatter after the descent, but then rolling, and, and there's a small matter of bringing back Marco Frigo. He's the peloton in theory. I think Kirsch was in here. I saw Kirsch in, and then all of a sudden, it cut back, and Pedersen's on his own in an even smaller group with three Arkea riders, with Zangler, who's close on GC and has got a good kick in this sort of finish. They bring back Kostu, Army Rail's pulling because yeah he's close on gc sheen's there for israel so he's not going to pull because he's still got free up the road so basically no one's helping pedersen and he's going to have to pull all the way to the finish manage riders counter-attacking bring back Frigo, and somehow yeah not lose the stage not have someone counter-attack him and he really does the only thing he could do which is just just pull the entire time the benefit for him here is now the real climbs even a 6k 5% climb those sort of ones are finished and it's more rolling terrain sort of like what he won in in Harrogate in the world championships in 2019 in this sort of terrain rainy conditions about 8 to 10 degrees there's not many riders better than Mads Pedersen and so he manages then another counter-attack from RK pretty well at perhaps Perhaps other riders like Zangler could have contributed to this rather than waiting for the finish. I would have liked to see Zangler try that. But the reality as well is that Pedersen just kept pulling and kept the pace high the whole time. And the times he didn't, Arkea did try to go. But I do think that that was the only play possibly for, for Zangler rather than waiting in the wheels the whole time. But maybe you thought 
he's going to get tired because there's this uphill finish. Maybe he thought, I'll let him work himself over and then I can beat him in this uphill drag, which did for Marco Frigo. He got brought back by Pedersen here, who's basically doing the 2.1 version of Van der Poel's Amstel Gold Race 2019. And then I think it's Stitz on Project Echelon Racing. He had a really good stage. He opens it out. Pedersen's looking tired, but when he kicks here... He somehow still has that 20 to 30 second long sprint. There is pretty much nobody better on uphill drags like this. Zangler tries to get out of the saddle, get back out again, but he gets beaten by a bike length. Pedersen, super impressive performance. I know it's it's not a world tour race, but like Zangler's a good rider on those sort of finishes. And for all the work Pedersen had to do to then win that stage, manage GC, contain all the Arkea counterattacks, Really, really impressive wins, like his fifth race this year or something. <laughs> Ed Zangler, Shampoo, then Stitz, uh, Deletra, Sheehan, Germani, Amiral, Kosciu, and Garcia Piana. In terms of GC, Pedersen uh, has a pretty comfortable lead, actually, now. 24 seconds to both Amiral and Kosciu, and then Sheehan's on 25 seconds, Garcia Piana, 26, Zangler, 6. So there's a lot to play for with the podium. They're all within 6 seconds from 2nd to 6th. Zangler will be trying something tomorrow, perhaps, or maybe just hoping for another 2nd, and then that might put him in... Uh, into second position we'll see you then it's been terrible weather there it's snowing here where i am and i hope you enjoyed the video until tomorrow's stage ciao